Hello. Video settings, background, filters. Ooh, I can do that. Does that help? That's a nice one. <laughs> My daughter. <laughs> I just talk the whole way through. They don't make the mouth move. Can't really do that, can I? Aren't these great? Well, I, I I do get I do get a little bit tired of them after. Okay, I have to take off. <laughs> I have to take off the filter. That's funny. That's funny. Huh? Can't take it off. No, I'm just like, how do I take this uh, fucker? Oh, no, none. Okay. <laughs> don't you think, don't you think okay. that's better than uh, normal? No. You like normal. Oh. Why? Yeah, I do. Why? Because I, I find it distracting. I find this distracting talking to somebody with, like, yours is cool. Like, let me go to yours here so I can see you. Yours is cool. Like, yours. Well, you can way load, more. I've got like graphics. you can load some images, right? Like it's uh, you can load any picture that you oh. want. Are you sure? Yeah, you I don't know. have a special. No, there's a thing. There's a plus plus sign to the right, and you can just go add image. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. I didn't know that. Okay. All right. Well, I'll find some. I'll find some for for next time. With that. <laughs> Isn't that good? That's funny. Okay. That's hello. Hello. Well, I mean, it, it's, it's not, I thought about it. It's not, it's not everything. To me. I think it's not great. everything. I love this. Me. I'll put one of my favorite uh, art photos. That fucking photo. I think this, because <laughs> I always love green screen and I always wanted to do green screen filming and now you don't even have to worry about it. Like, I just think it's fantastic. Oh. Well, do you have like a, you have a better, like a better background? Not really. I think, I don't know, like, look at that. Like that's, I'm amazed at the technology. There you go. <laughs> Hello. Hello. That's funny. Yeah, it's funny. Actually, Speaker, full screen, gallery, gallery, just us. Yeah, I guess so. I was like, I really want to live here. <laughs> this is where I live. I think the idea is if I had a different background where it's a solid, yeah, that's funny. If you had a solid background, it probably makes it easier. I have my bookshelf behind. Yeah. Okay. You don't find it distracting? I like. It. I don't know. I. I just. I like it. Where, where is? I think there's. Okay. I think where is this thing? Let me find. There's something that here. Like this to me is like the ultimate of oh, okay. of insanity. It's it's like I'm wearing my mask even in my Zoom room. You might be contagious as, you know, particle. I know, I know, I know. So what's happening? I haven't talked to you almost two days. Big things. I'm stealing Sarah's licorice. Oh, nice. For Easter and I'm stealing it. I can see big things are happening for you. I had an epiphany yesterday, which really isn't a big one. It's just a, I follow John Wyland all the time. He's a, he's like a David Data guy. Uh -huh. And he has these three calls once a month, which are really awesome. And people ask them just basic relationship questions. And he gives them like some like stuff that you think that you would know, but because you're in your, he was trying to say that we all have our karmic patterns in relationships. And so is your job is to be aware of the karmic pattern and then see if you can't breathe and sort of do something different than your pattern. That, that would be how you would change your karmic patterns. Be so aware that you're like, I'm going to choose something different in this moment um, to shift it. And this lady was saying, you know, I get in this relationship with this guy and my guy, and he gets really crazy. Like he gets like crazy and blah. And he goes, I don't I just started checking out now. I'm just like, I'm checked out. 
and I'm not attracted to him anymore. And so what John ends up saying is, well, you know, because of your karma, you have this, the pattern in your childhood that's attracting this man that repeats the karma. So you can both work out your stuff. And he says, so the thing to do is whenever this guy's almost going to like fly off the lid, you say to your man, Hey, Hey, my man. Hey, Hey, my handsome man. Hey, my lover. You're why don't I'm going to leave if you're not going to calm down. Like I'm going to, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to come back or I'll come back next day or let's talk in two days when you're calmed down. Cause this isn't going anywhere for either of us, for me. So just let you know, I love you. I'm here for you. And this is what I'm going to do. And I, I found that really, it would probably would work for women because we hate that word, calm down. <laughs> it's more like, all right, you're a little bit excited. <laughs> anyway, it, when he said that, she was just sort of, you could tell that she felt relieved that there was a solution other than there's something that she had to do. It was more like, I'm going to set up some boundaries, which are, these are relationship containers. Whenever you go this way, I get to say, stop, hold the bus until you calm down or until you regain your sanity or whatever. And I, I loved it. I thought it was really a beautiful way to manage what she probably didn't man couldn't have managed when she was little, which is her dad or mom getting crazy on her or, and she was like a kid just frozen there, just like, you know, and then eventually you just shut down in your head and go somewhere else creative. So I just, I just love being reminded of how simple the work is and that the creative patterns to not beat yourself up when you're just in this continuous pattern of whatever it is. So today I was on an interview call with a lady and I was getting mad and I wasn't mad at her. I was getting mad at myself because I knew that this was a, a certain kind of position, $45,000. It was supposed to be taking calls to, you know, join cool programs at the VCAD, which I'm interested in. But then it turned to like her talking about cold calling and how do I manage pressure at work? And I'm like, oh, I fucking hate these questions. Can't we fucking ask different questions? And I'm like, I'm getting a little bit kind of snappy. And I'm like, okay, choose to do something different. <laughs> and I did, I didn't do it fully, but halfway I said, am I, did I hear you correctly? <laughs> like, is this, is this a junior position? So it's a junior position where you have to make 50 or 100 calls. I said, that's really not my game. I've already done that. And, but she never answered my question. So I, I tried to, I managed it better than I normally do. Normally I'd like to say, fuck you, I'm out. Like I just get mad. And then she hit me with a, this is for CDI college. I said, excuse me, you said it was for VCAD. I said, I don't want to sell for, C no way, wrong girl. Sorry, you've got the wrong person. I'm not selling for CDI. Cause you know, cause I said, there's just something in my consciousness that says something's not right. What is it? Right. You know, you're making 45, but you don't pay for parking. You've got weird hours. You could make up to 65,000. Well, well, we have people that make up to a hundred thousand. I'm like, mm -hmm. missing information. <laughs> like in my mind, I'm going missing information. Not that stupid anymore, but I didn't blow her off this time, which was for me was a big deal. She goes, well, we're going to keep, we're going to keep out, keep your application open. Lisa, and if anything comes up for VCAD, we'll let you know. And I'm like, okay, thank you. But, Can I give you a metaphor? Sorry. Can I give you a metaphor? Yeah. I'm seeing an NBA player trying out for elementary school teams. Yeah. And so every time you go in, you, 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 you want to treat, treat them with respect and you want to, but you're going immediately, you go, you see what it is, you know yeah. what it is, and it isn't for you. <laughs> yeah. But I really could have blown her. I knew I wasn't going to take the job, but I could have really gotten fucking mad. <laughs> which is my normal go-to, which is like, oh, <laughs> I got a little bit cranky, but anyway. It is just, it's just like those stupid calls. It's like, really? Those stupid calls. Stupid. Well, there's a, you know, it's, it's like the Incredible Hulk forgetting that he's the Incredible Hulk. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's like Bruce Banner or whatever. He's walking around and he's, he's, and he's talking to people. He's going, you know, I just think I have something that's a little bit different from you guys. And they're going, yeah, I know. You seem a bit different, a bit weird. No, 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 no. You're going, no, 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 no. Wait a second. <laughs> I'm a lot different from you guys. And they're going, yeah, I know. You dress different. You talk different. No, you're going, no, you don't understand. <laughs> I have this part of me that's really different. 
and and no one knows or can see the incredible hulk behind you kind of thing yeah and and to me what you've done is you keep forgetting you're the incredible hulk well the other the other testament is mirror mirror is the mirror mirror then like i might be the incredible hulk and forget it but i can't help but say that the universe is mirror mirror like my favorite lesson is whatever is whatever you get projected back to you is something that's going on inside you could never attract the two it have to be the opposite right or, or else they similar some kind of reflection or something polarized but right? what's the, but what's the context the context Are you is, saying in every context the universe is reflecting your inner world yeah this is just what i discovered for myself I was doing one of my exercises this morning and it was to I really needed to feel, I was trying to feel what my yearning was, like what my deepest yearning was. And it was, that I'd like, I kept going over it until I really got it. And I finally came up with, I'd like to be in a long-term relationship where I felt love and acceptance. I really would. I, my biggest yearning was to be, this is what I'd like. And then my thought went to, hmm, well, if I'm not, if I'm not my own relation, best relationship, that I have love and yearning to be accepted by myself, then how can I expect the universe on the outside to reflect it back in or to bring it back in? Ah. Because that's what children are for. That's what your children are for. As a parent, you must to love your kids and you just love them unconditionally and you reflect back. That's what Mark has a practice that when you have a baby, the reason why you look at babies and babies look back at you is they don't know who they are yet. They only know who they are by the eyes of the parent reflecting back to them like, Hi, oh, you're lovely. You're good. Like, it's an actual practice of, of cooing. That's why they coo. And I thought, well, if you didn't get that as a kid, you'd be forever having to learn the karmic pattern of I love myself. I'm okay and I'm whole. I, I can make mistakes and I'm still loved because that's what came up was that underneath that was if I'm not dressed a certain way, I don't have friends. If I don't have money, I don't have friends. I don't have lovers because if I look at my reflective, my feedback that I get back, the feelings underneath all the crap is like, oh, I wasn't good enough for this guy because I didn't have enough money. Oh, I wasn't good enough for this guy because I didn't do this because I, I, I acted like a two-year, whatever it is. And so for me, that mirror, mirror really is about if I could really just love myself, Elijah, like, I mean, like really just say, I love you with all your parts and pieces and your messed up stuff and your lovely stuff and your height, your Hulk stuff. And your mm -hmm. that's why I think the superheroes always have the two sides, mm -hmm. the Superman. And then also he's somebody else. We always have the two sides. Yeah. And so if we can't love the both side, then there's, that's where the disconnect is. And I, I don't know how to heal that just yet other than kind of going, Huh, it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to fuck up. It's so, like, I've never allowed myself to just be okay with making myself, like making a mistake of beating my fucking self up so badly. Like, I'm just older now. So now I'm more cognizant of my thoughts before it was like, you just go the other way and fuck, it's their fault, right? Like you're still caught in it's fucking their fault. <laughs> so I, that's what I mean about the mirror mirror is if I don't, if I don't truly love myself, Elijah, if I don't really love myself and really just accept all these weird, because I did it with Sarah yesterday. I, it was, I noticed it after talking to, after being on the line with John, Sarah was sitting at the table and I'm like helping her do some homework. And she's, I said, well, okay, what's 10 minus nine? And she's like, And in my, in my fucking mind, I totally went recoiled. I went, are you fucking kidding me? Judgment. The judgment was automatic. It was like, you don't fucking know what 10 minus nine is? What? Like it was a judgment. It was a full on body energy. And Sarah's, I said, Sarah, I said, it's, it's like nine, 10, like it's one. She couldn't get it. And it, it's that, that's what I'm talking about is this, this automatic reflex when somebody does something wrong in my world, it's to recoil. Ooh, you know, 10 minus nine, like what? Like it was, I didn't say anything out loud, but it doesn't matter. The judge, the judgment was there. This constant judging of, you don't know, how come you're not good enough? It's all me. It can't, it's not Sarah. She's, she's lovely. The judgment is like, you don't know that. Fuck. Like, 
So I'm, I'm just kind of going through my own process of how much I judge men, especially at work, at lovers, they're, they do something wrong and I judge them so harshly that I recoil and, and then they feel the recoilness and then it's no wonder I'm never in relationship. So he's like, it's great, recoil. And the recoil is, it's not okay for them to be unperfect because it's not okay for me to be imperfect. Oh. Like that is for me, it's so simple, but it's huge for me to that's acknowledge nice. that. That's, yeah. the, that's the key of the whole thing, I think. I, I didn't see it until I just did the thing this morning. I was like, oh. Oh my no, God. I don't, I don't see men at all. I, I'm totally so judgmental because it's not okay for them to be them. It's not okay for me to be me, Elijah. It's not okay. There's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with me. And that I can look at you and point to you or point to Sarah and go, oh, well, well we're not doing it right. When really it's me. It's like, you're doing it wrong, Lisa. Hmm, what are you going to do? Like, so I just, I did, I know that sounds like a gift. It sounds simple, but it's huge. No, I mean, which, is there a certain gene key that is maybe? Or is that, um, I mean, that's. I vibrational pattern it, it's for me it just has to be a vibrational pattern i'm aware of it now elijah like like i think i've always been leading up to this point which is i look at other people i judge them for being especially fat people i fucking hate fat people i don't know what it is i have i literally have a ooh, like it's a gluttony and maybe it's because i was little we didn't have food so i think that have food i hate them because obviously they're eating and that's why they're overweight, most of them. And so I, I think it's just that this, like, ew, you're fat and wealthy, or you're fat and you're happy, or whatever it is. There's something there. But I, all the places that I recoil is, there's lots. It's, it's never ending. But, it, but to me, it's, I mean, you're, you're narrowing in on the fundamental, like there isn't a human being alive that isn't doing what you're doing, right? We're all doing it. We have, a, we have this mental interpretation that immediately sees and then gives a good or bad right or wrong yeah. right it's the dualistic interpretation of reality and then we were all imprinted as a kid because everyone's doing it to everybody <laughs> blah, 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 blah. yeah yeah so i think i think you're getting back not back you're getting to the to your core 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 wound like you're you're at it yeah that's 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 amazing. I mean, I, I think that's like, because I think when, when most people are going external and they're doing the, what you've been doing is you just keep narrowing down and keep narrowing down. You are going to the root of what is the cause of what's happening to you. So that's, you know, that's the intensity of your exploration. I mean, you, you, you are, you are going to get to the root of what the frick is going on here, man. I mean, I, I am. most of us, I think, don't have that type of persistence or courage. I mean, you just have tremendous courage to keep diving back in to go, okay, it's not done yet. Got to go back in, got to go back in. Because like to me, when you come out, it's like you're coming out with the full force of your, of your awareness. You got yeah. so much freaking awareness now that until you deal with this one, you're like this freaking guy with a machine gun who's everyone's afraid of because they don't want to get near you because they're afraid if they go wrong. You're going to turn your machine gun on you. Oh, here you are. Yeah. Especially if you want to have a relationship. Well, you have to have one with yourself. So if you can't love yourself or accept myself or my faults, it's going to get this. It's always easy to project outside yourself. Fucking asshole. Like, look what he did. Right. And I've had done lots of demartini work where that's what you, that's the whole quantum collapse processes you take their traits you find where you have them you find where you've done them to other people how did it serve you how did it serve up like you but it's too fucking long like his work for me is always too long and so i just want to i think it's the catching the awareness i just ca i literally caught sarah's this like yesterday i'm like oops oh there it is right and even my friend said well, I'd like to see you, Lisa, but you know, I got, I'm getting a vaccine. Are you getting your vaccine? And I'm like, again, I was just like, I'm going to respond differently. I said, no, no, we're not into vaccine. And, and then I said, you know me, Brenda, because she's known me since I was five. She goes, oh no, I, I didn't. 
I, I didn't know that about or said something like that. I didn't know you were against them, the word she used. And I could have got true here and said, oh, this is what the fuck, that's what they're doing, you know, and justified my position. And all I said was, I always know there's both sides and I'm just choosing to be on this side based on my own research. Everybody's free to choose, right? Which is different for me, Elijah. I would be like, fucking hammer that one in. But if there is both sides to make the quantum, who is right? If you don't know the grand scheme. Maybe we fucking need to be blown up. Like, I don't know, like who knows? So who, who's right? The, the world has a bigger view than I do. The universe has a way bigger view than I do. So I'll just take my opinion. Thank you very much. And you keep yours and we're all good. Not right, not wrong. Even though there's always a bit of like, mm -hmm, right? Now, I need those people. We need those fucking the bottom of the pyramid. We need all those slaves building that fucking bottom part of the pyramid. Fucking going to work, doing the shit, putting their money in the banking system. Like we need all of them. <laughs> you know if we didn't have them the, place, the whole thing would collapse <laughs> i i like the ctv i don't know if you ever look at my facebook stream but i i have like this huge amount of memes around the covid and the vaccines right i'm just anytime i find when i pop, 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 pop. and then i go on ctv and i just i read i, I i'm like I, i'm on the phone i'm just i'm just like totally yeah. addicted to at like i i line bed get the phone get the thing and then for hours i can just like i'm i'm like some walking zombie computer guy who's just <laughs> seeking anything to confirm my bias that this is fucked <laughs> and then you come to ctv and you see all these comments and this is like this is this is like my my feeding ground of insanity or stupidity i'm reading all the comments are you i can't believe that i can't believe that i can't believe that i can't believe it but I don't, I haven't involved myself in the fight. I just observe and go on and, and, and do that. But I was thinking, I, I put a little me few memes. I went onto one site and I just put a few just to kind of test it out. Cause I know that they'll all attack me or I'm fearful. I'm going, if I actually say what I think on this stream, I, they will all attack me. And up until now, I've been kind of you know, I, I don't want to get attacked. I want to be liked. I want to be loved. I, you know, there's a part of me that just, you know, is, is wants to get along with everybody because I've been like you have been through so much shit. I've been the rebel and everywhere I go now, it's like, this is my heyday. Like you couldn't have something better for me than right now in terms of, okay, I'm going to give it to you. And, and, and I find in myself, I'm like, I'm quiet or I'm, I'm going, I'm just getting my business going. Every time I'm trying to do something, my activism kills me. Like every time I'm just about to get going, I defend the forest. I defend the dolphins. I defend something and I get slaughtered. Yeah. I just, just slaughtered. And then it takes six months to a year to even <laughs> regain some confidence, you know, get some resources and start to get going. I get back into the plan. I'm getting back in the plan. I'm getting the things, I'm getting the things. And then, and then it's like, oh, another activist thing. I jump into it and I ruin my life. And this is my pattern over and over again. And now, I mean, I'm set. I, I mean, I'm ready here. I'm ready here. And, and there's a forest, there's an old growth forest thing happening on Vancouver Island. I don't know if you know about, but the Ferry Creek. And I went up there and I tell you, like I was greeted by a map, by three people. And the, and the, and one of the people greeted me is like the hero, the hero of the story. Like he's a great guy. He's a beautiful guy. And he was the guy with, I guess, a couple of friends who saw the forester being taken down. He goes up there, he creates a blockade, takes a stand. Like in my books, this is hero stuff. This is like, you did the right thing. So here's this hero, but with a mask going, you know, and so immediately I, I'm like, I mean, I didn't know that was him, but I was greeted by the mask. They said, okay, we follow COVID protocols, no weapons and no, uh, it, it, it basically was, don't be you here. We can see you, but whatever you are, don't be you here. And so I took my camp down the road and I put it far away. And I never talked to them again. <laughs> and that created this, I was asked to leave three times. Every day they'd come down there to ask us to leave. And I, and I was with Planetary Guardians, right? Planetary Guardians media team. 
They never asked what we were doing there. I had all my tables out. They never asked what the tables were. They never, they never investigated to find out who I was. They just saw what they didn't like and went, you know, you guys got to go, which is yeah. basically what I've experienced all my life. You know, yeah, you, you got to go. Like, and I think like you, like when you get kicked out so much, when you, when you get thrown out all the time, at some point, you just sort of look around, you see the person who's going to kick you out, you see the reason why, and you may create the disturbance to get thrown out. You may walk out or you may create the fight, but whatever it is, you never sort of walk in expecting to be accepted for yourself, right? Yeah. And well, so... What if that, what was under, what's underneath that though, Elijah? Well, no, but I'm trying to get to a point of, of the dynamic of what I saw in that I knew what was going on the entire time. I knew what I was doing. Like it wasn't unconscious this time, it was conscious. I consciously didn't speak to them. I, con I was watching and observing the whole time. And every time they came to kick us out, they didn't kick us out. They couldn't kick us out because it's not so easy to kick out Captain Sweep anymore if he doesn't want to be kicked out. You can try, <laughs> you can use your reason, but it's not quite what you, every time they sit down, they think they know what's going on. If you actually start to have a conscious communication with someone, they realize they're dealing with something different than they're used to. And, and whatever is their judgment in the moment, it's like, oh, okay, well, you know, oh, you have like when humans actually engage in communication that's conscious, you can't get away with your patterns. You just can't use your power. Okay, you guys are out, go. No, I'm going to sit here. If you, if you, unless you got a tank, I'm not moving, right? Because you're actually blockading this road. I'm blockading the road too. You know, who's in charge? Are you in charge? Who's, you know, why, you know, you wanted me up here. Don't you want me here? Yeah, yeah, we want you here. We want all the, but, but you're telling me to leave. But I got a camp, but I'm doing media. You, you brought global in, but I'm media. I, I'm, I'm feel, like, what, what, what are you doing here? Who, like... <laughs> I'm having uh, everything in my life is sort of going well right now. Like the Luciel, we just, we're, we're, there's another part of the software program. And the guy who I thought went to school was not going to do just work 12 hours and just popped out this new program that's killer. And we just tested it this morning and it went like, it's not finished, but the whole team's like, yeah, 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 this is good. And we've got 144 people in 12 teams that are going through this process. And I'm on this design team and I'm, I'm going, okay, well, let's bring this to, let's bring this. Like there, I finally have some people to work with who are very happy for me to be there. I'm with some people that are appreciating me as a human being and aren't going, don't bring that in. They're going, what do you got? what's there you know and, and that's like a miracle to me and then I've got in Yorkton I've got four women who are paying to get coached who are wanting to build a shared knowledge community who have the resources to do it who have a building I have they have my trust and they're super excited like they are like we are building a new paradigm and we are going to create our ideal, ideal job. And we have these maps. And Captain Sweep here, this guy, he's done something. Yeah. So I'm the man. You are the man. I am the man. And this is, you know, the tools. I'm seeing the tools to create these new ways of speaking and being with these. And it's happening. And so it's, it's just like, I'm in shock. I'm, I'm, I'm experiencing this. And I'm, I'm not... You know, I, they're not shutting me down. I'm not self-sabotaging myself. I and and but there's no actual difference. Like, I mean, I think I've got to a point where I can read the person and give enough info, not overwhelm them, take them along a few steps and really help them, right? Like in a one hour session, I can really help somebody. So it's it feels like the breakthrough in terms of the financial thing kind of just happened. They ordered 20 card sets. You know, 20 card sets. I mean, I can, I actually could make about five grand if I wanted per 20 card sets. And I'm thinking I could sell hundreds of thousands of card sets. So, I mean, I, I'm just this far away from like, boom, da ba ba, making the big bucks. You know, this is something 25 years been working on. And every step of the way, I'm going, 
why isn't this happening in the way that I think it should be happening? Because this is so good, but what, you know, and it's the same thing with you where my, my patterns of responding to judgment are so quick. I can feel what you're thinking. I can see what you're thinking. And guess what? I'm going to hammer you back before you even, after the second word. And it's just like me up at the, at the post, like I'm, they just walked up and I'm already, I know it's going to happen, but I'm not using any tools to sort of create the rapport, build some nice softness, take whatever judgments they have and go, no, I'm not doing that inside. I'm like, fuck you too. I'm going to go. <laughs> I know it's a fight. I'm going to fucking fight it out. Because, and I, and I feel like, you know, and I, I think I'm just a little bit farther ahead than you in terms of as soon as your gift is appreciated by just one person who really gets it and goes, hey man, here's a hundred grand. You just made me a million. I'm going to give you an actual hundred grand, right? Yeah. That idea changed my company that you gave me in our first meeting because you, you get the idea in the first meeting, give it in the first meeting. And then the person didn't even get it because it wasn't presented in a way where they could actually get the value of what you can do. Right? Yeah, me not value, me not really honoring my value because I thought of why the feng shui thing kept coming up. Exactly well, and, and, and I, just, I just want to give some feedback here because you, it just seems what I'm seeing. I haven't seen you for a while and I'm seeing, you know, where you're at. I'm going, wait a sec, what the fuck happened, man? I mean, what happened? And, it, and I, my guess is, as we learned last time, when you got pounded and, you know, it just goes on that core wound and it's just like fucking here, man. You're different. You're different. Well, fucking, you're not fitting the mold. Fuck you. It's, it's a fuck you. Whenever you're that confident with men, it's fuck you. Well, yeah, I know how to take you down. It's just a money thing. Do you know what I would love? I would love to be in some of these meetings with these people that you have. <laughs> That'd be great. Love and either it. stand there silently and look very ominous or just tear them apart anytime they cross a line that I don't even like. And, and if they treat you bad in any way, I just slaughter them. I think it's what they're not saying, though, Elijah, is what I'm getting is that people are quite nice on the surface to me. But nobody, because of my power, and I don't mean that in an egotistic way, I meant like the way I show up, people are actually scared, but they don't say what they need to say. They just fucking punch me in the back of the head when I'm not looking right with whatever they're saying to other people, you know, like even the one guy got in the elevator and I apologized to him because I thought I'll apologize to him. I'll be humble. I said, I'm sorry if I was aggressive with you. I'm just that kind of personality. I like to get stuff done. And, you know, so I apologize if I seemed over the top. Oh yeah, Lisa, we were wondering what your boyfriend was like, you know, to be with you. <laughs> And I was just like, you know, I should have fucking strangled them in the elevator, but the door rang and we left out. But inside that little girl in me just was like, oh, is that what you're talking about? You're talking about me and how I'm such a, a certain way that that's why my boyfriend is a, like, which is part of it is true. I, I am like, and that's why the guys are like, what the fuck, right? I keep thinking I need a stronger guy when it's not that it's just being okay with, I, I don't It's like expressing the truth versus the anger. The anger never works. The sadness as a female, if I express my like hurt, my heart hurt, that a game would be different. But I, I, my pattern is to armor up and fuck you, go fuck yourself. That's what my mom did. I've just seen it oh, too many times. So now it's to, it's like retraining the nervous system. I'd be like, that really hurts. You know, and that's it, right? Oh, oh, what, what, what happened? Oh, well, this is how I feel. I, I've never practiced that ever. It's always been go fuck yourself in your fucking small cock. Go blah, 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 blah. like I would just like <sighs> hammer down. You know that would be my rah, and they'd be like the fuck. And then you know why would a guy want to be beaten up by a female? They've already you guys men have been beaten up by us women over and over because we're just frustrated. We're just sad. We just we want to be taken care of and seen and protect. We want men to show men to show up. And fucking know where they're going and what they're doing because we're tired of fuck we're tired of managing it all i i get that so i get the two sides of it like you know, we're fighting with two sides but it's it's to go back that's why i still like david data and 
John Wyland, I like their way. It's really simple. The core is really simple. Like, is your, does it hurt your heart when he does that? Yeah, it hurts my heart. Well, you got to tell him. So how do you tell him without fucking ripping his neck off and fucking punching him in the face? No, no guy's going to be like, oh, okay, you mad? <laughs> it's more like, uh, I'm out of here. Yeah. I'm out of here. So but even like he, re um, like my bike, my motorcycle that I bought from Darren, it needs all this work. And part of me was kind of mad. I'm thinking, I bought this fucking bike from this guy who fucking knew there was no back tire left on it. No, you know, needed new sprockets and chain and something was like, he lights weren't working. He knew that he's a mechanic guy. He knew that. Right. But then I thought, well, this is sort of like the game is I went and bought a bike that I didn't bring anybody with me. I didn't go get it checked out. I, I didn't do that. So is that his fault or my fault or both? Well, Can you I ended up dating him? him, so it's different. <laughs> well, I, it's like, I, I prefer to have a guy that was just, and I thought, was he honest with me? And I didn't hear, did he say, you, you'll you need a new back tire, new chain, but this is what the bike costs right now. This is what I'm offering it for. You could probably, you know, but he, you know, he didn't offer that. And I met, I know when I met him, hands in pockets, kind of like little boy, kind of, kind of awkward, you know, wasn't sure what to say that that instinct that I had of who he was, was, I was bang on, it was bang on. But then I went through this karmic journey with him to feel this loneliness and this feeling of being let go. And it, honestly, like just like being rejected for whatever reason. It's like, that's my wound. It's like, you're, you're rejected because you're whatever. You say whatever. You're not doing the right thing. You're not making enough money. You're not like fitting into the mold. Like it's, you're just rejected. You're like a throwaway. You know, is that my wound? Is it my mom's wound? My, yeah, sure. It's, it's all of that. But until I can kind of be okay with that, I have all these awesome gifts and I'm a human being. I can't really be the Hulk because I can't really be with my human being at all and I want to I want to just be like I just want to be like hey I made a mistake and be okay with it like really inside not feel weird and I want Sarah to be okay totally okay with not being a mathematician or figuring things out I don't want her to be like that at all but she's got like a high performance mother who's like yeah these are my gifts this is what I'm gonna do and it's just um it's so humbling to know your gifts and to know your weaknesses. And somehow your weaknesses overshadow your gifts sometimes. That's all. That's all. Like if I could create a program, like find your weaknesses, they, you know, if they're overshadowing them, yeah, of course you're not excelling. You know, you can't be positive. I can't be like, yeah, I'm so awesome. It's more like, yeah, I, got, I do have weaknesses. This is where they are. But I, I could make somebody a lot of money what's what's going on with your course like when was the last time that you did a course i did my course last month and i did it at my house and you know what i realized Elijah, that i like doing it like it was fun it's fun to watch but again the mirror was there that people just aren't aren't willing to pay for it it's really cool shit that you could see something for yourself about your pattern but what it is is i don't think people are actually aware of their awareness they're not they don't, they're not really, they're not sure what they're seeing. Like it's almost like it's too deep. Like there's something that people weren't willing to pay for it. And so I ended up having a bunch of my friends come just because I said I would do it. And I did it and it was fun. It was great. But it was like, I'd make more money doing feng shui because people somehow seem to relate their environment and money to feng shui, but not getting like a life pattern. Somehow I, I, don't, just, I don't know if that's my bag. I've done five of them now and I've done some even one-on-ones and maybe it's my inner thing that's like I'm not like honoring that I have this gift to show somebody something deep but it's like people just don't want to pay for it like they don't they don't honor the fucking I mean, like the, it should be life-altering for, for me it's they're life-altering when I get to see those patterns in, in people like how they are with their how they feel like awesome it's i think it's also very 
it's difficult to do such things with your friends, you know, because yeah. there's so much past history. They see you in a certain way. It's, 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 it's like they, they're not willing to treat you as a professional in that moment that, yeah. has, that has a gift that is going to truly affect them in a transformative way. I mean, I really think you should do with people who don't know you at all. I wonder, I just wondered, Elijah, that maybe my gift is through writing where people can't see me. And like, I don't mean that like a, like part of it is the wound, but the other part is when people can't see me and they can't like, hey, she's like that or whatever. It's like they, they might hear my message. I just wondered about that. If somehow writing and a book and an ebook was to be better landed with people than my energy or my <coughs> what like. Well, I think right now, I mean, you're in a, you're in a rock bottom, low confidence place. Mm -hmm. And I don't think your interpretation really is valid, even though it, it may, I, I think you're gifted in writing and I think you're, you're gifted with people. I mean, there's no doubt about either one, but mm -hmm. I don't think right now is, is like, you got to understand where you're at. Yeah. And, and to me, it, it's like, What's going to stabilize your emotional state? Yeah. Like, well, I, like I find that, you know, what I've learned is that people need to. I'm not gonna say this. Like, if I don't find, like, if I'm not working right now, if I don't find things to do right now that are for me that nurture me somehow, then I can't regain. It's really hard for me to regain things because I'll go into bad patterns, you know, like I'll do nothing, I'll hang out, I'll drink, I'll, you know, not get anything done. And so I've decided that if I did make a commitment, do a half an hour of something every day, the matter of painting a painting that I said I would finish, exercising because I said I would do it, uh, cleaning uh, one room because I just, I just want to get it clear. Like there, I don't really have any, otherwise I'm just, I can't go on LinkedIn and just fucking hit like, apply, 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 you know, it has to be because I'm building momentum some other way that's for myself and for other shit. Have you ever gone to a headhunter? Yeah. Yeah. How your, what was your experience like? Not good. Not good. Like how long ago did that happen? Like who, tell me about it. The last guy, I was shocked. He called me because this guy wanted to find people in the furniture industry to do sales for his uh, dental, the create really cool dental stuff for kids. And I, I, they picked me because of my Herman Miller background and I worked with his sister. So for me, it was like, yeah, awesome. Okay, got this, wow, it came out of left field. I was not expecting that. I had a good, great first interview. I wasn't, I didn't want to do the interview though. I, I woke up in the morning and went, fuck, I don't want to be there. And then by the time I went there, I was like, oh, I really like the president. But then again, I went and walked around the environment. I was like, something's not right. Something's not clicking. A really kind of dead energy in here. I don't know. And then by the time I had to do my second interview, I, I was in such a terrible state that day that I canceled. I literally just said, I can't do a, you had to do a Zoom presentation of trying to engage them into what you were talking about. But the guy, again, this is right after the feng shui issue. He said, is your feng shui going to be a conflict of interest, Lisa? out of nowhere because I was going to present on feng shui he says is it going to be a conflict of interest this not even just some guy that new business development guy like number command number three whatever and for some reason it just sent me sideways but I just I lost it and so I canceled the meeting they were not happy that I canceled the meeting but so I that, did. Was it. that was last that was on Thursday <laughs> what about a female headhunter I don't know. I like, I find they ask, they ask the same stupid questions. It's like they're probing for shit to figure out where you're, whatever. I don't know. I've never met a really great anybody. I've never met a good headhunter. I've never met a good HR person that says, Lisa, tell me about how you can help people make money. Where's your best skills? Like, what could you do? Like, what do you get excited about? Cause they don't have any training. That's the, that's just been my experience. I've had a couple of headhunters and not gotten anything from anybody because they don't want people that quit jobs i'll tell them everything in the interview that's the problem <laughs> right like, oh, how about this how about this how about this uh 
well, I could stand this guy and we didn't get along and blah, blah, blah. like it's, it's like that. <laughs> You're honest. <laughs> I'm too honest. I just get in there and I, I, I basically talk myself out of a job. You know, I'm better off not doing like my friends asking my friends or people that know me honestly to like, was my friend Joseph says, you don't want to do that interview. Like, forget that. You're not going to sit at a desk and cold call people because you need to be with other people live and do, do new home, new home sales is that it would work in your favor. But again, I'm not feel like anybody's reaching out and, you know, <laughs> voting me right now. Is there a lot of new home sales in Calgary? Yeah. yeah. Would you want to do that? Yeah, I would if the pay was good. Like if the compensation was great, because I, I don't have any problem selling people on my, my excitement, like my excitement for environments and light. And like I, I sell it it's so easy to sell it. People just like being around you because you you like space. <laughs> it's different. Is your car working? Yeah. Why don't you go drive around some development areas that have new homes in them? Yeah, I could. I could do some. And just go on a walkabout, like just just drive around. And I mean, to me, when it, when I was in the painting business, right? I mean, everything was done on site. Yeah. And you know, if you wanted a paint job, go on the site, talk to the person. You want to find, you know, whatever it is. It's it's not like a. It's everything is with the person in the moment. And if you come across good, they like you, right? And it shows initiative. Yeah. Yeah, I could do that. I'd find some areas that I like to work in and see what they're doing and do that. But wait, I gotta ask you, like, what's the, something rocked you hard? Like, what, was it the breakup? Was it, was it the, him being with another woman? Was it the bike? Like, was there something in there that just, just threw, threw you for a world? It, it's usually when I pan things back, it's the breakup. I really have a hard time with, like, I just have a hard time with rejection. I have a hard time with, because it's, it feels like it's about me versus it just being that he just maybe wanted somebody who was, you know, easygoing or maybe he wanted somebody that, whatever. I don't know what it is because we had such a great connection up to that point. So I, my, part of my brain can't figure out what I did wrong or what happened or why he didn't fight for me or why he didn't say, hey, Lisa, you just misinterpreted something. It's not what happened. This is what actually happened, but he he doesn't even he didn't even bother to do that, which made me feel like I wasn't important. That's just my wound with my mom. That's the same thing. You're not important enough to show up. You're not important enough to say anything. You're not important enough to have lunch ready. You're not important to have. Doesn't matter. You're just you're just nobody. This you're just discardable. Doesn't you don't care how good it was, how good the sex was, or how good the connection was, or what you gave them. It means nothing. You're nothing. And that's just where I go. It's just, it crushes me. Like it, it crushes me. Because I just want somebody to love me. I just want somebody to like love me and just say, you're going to be okay. These and things are going to be okay. And I love you. And we're going to get through this. And don't worry about it. And awesomeness. That's what I'm waiting for. But I'm waiting for somebody that I'm loving. Not, I have lots of guys that would love to be with me, but I, I'm just not in love with them. I'm just not in love with them. I mean, Lisa, he wasn't in your ballpark. He wasn't in your league. It doesn't matter what you think. It's just that there was an energy, some kind of energetic connection that I can't explain. Mm. That when it leaves, it's it's torturous for me. It literally, I can justify him all I want. Small guy, you know, didn't show up for himself. Doesn't know what he wants. You know, I could do all of that. But there was some kind of deeper connection that I had that I can't, I just can't explain. Like well, there's something so meaningful for me and so deep that I, it's, it's like, it just wrenches me that part. Because I just can't believe it, that he just didn't feel the same way, that he didn't, he didn't have the same feeling enough to say, hey, you're important enough for me to talk it through with. Or, or figure things, or tell you the truth, or something. And that's, that's, that's the part, you know, but if I don't love myself at the beginning and honor it, then yeah, you get into these weird things, but 
Or maybe I'm misconstruing love. Like I'm misconstruing attachment or feeling good with attachment. If I feel good, it means I'm attached to them. If I feel good, it means love. I don't, maybe I am. I don't know. I don't know, Elijah. But I, I don't make love for fun. And I don't kiss anybody for fun at all, ever. It's meaningful, like deeply meaningful to me. It's like giving my, my soul somehow, I'm just giving up part of me. And when it gets rejected or it gets, it's like the deepest part of me is getting rejected. The deepest part of my love is getting rejected. And maybe I track the wrong guys. Maybe I just track guys that like me for the physical part of me. I don't, I don't know. There's something that they want. They need it. They need something from me, which is usually my energy and my enthusiasm and my love and my passion and my intensity. And they love all that. And then they just don't want the other side. And I think it's because it's me. I don't want, I won't accept the, the dark side, the negative side, the, the intense side. I won't accept that because I've been told that it's bad. It's wrong. It's, it's too much. It's, you got to calm down. You need to, you know, it's not nice. You can't say that, you know, girls aren't allowed to do that. Like it's, it's just a, it's, yeah. Yeah. Because it, it seemed like you broke up with him before and you weren't so affected and then you kind of went back again. And then it seems like you're a lot more affected because I was, in my mind, I, we broke up and I thought, okay, he doesn't want attachment. You know what? I thought to myself, what's nice is we get together, we have dinner, he takes me out, he brings me flowers. We, you know, we have a nice time with great sex. We have spend a day and a half together. And it, it filled me up. You know, when I was like in work, I was so stressed. And I was so stressed. And so it sort of like, it gave me something back. Like I felt like, oh, somebody who's, he would dote on me and hang out and bring me coffee in bed. Like he just served me the whole time I was there, which was nice for me. I didn't do anything. And he always complimented me how beautiful I was, how sexy I was, how like he just, everything was a compliment and an awesome, like it was, it was amazing. <laughs> and so I was like, okay, I can, this is good. I get that he doesn't want to marry me. He doesn't want to, okay, I get that. And then all of a sudden when I, we were supposed to get together, we had a great like Tuesday at my work. We actually like had a great Tuesday. Like uh, it was like awesome. And I said some really cool things to him that I maybe scared him away, which was, I see that you don't want any constraints on you. I see how hard it is to have any kind of pressures or any kind of strengths to do anything. And I said, I, I understand that now and I'm not doing that. I'm just saying, I'm enjoying the time that we have. And he was like taken back, like, oh my, Lisa, that's the nicest thing you've ever said to me. And even said it was the most we connected, you know, like it was awesome on Tuesday. But by Friday, I, I sent something was up at night and I was like, hey, how you doing? He was good, I'm, I'm so drunk, I'm at so-and-so's. And I was thinking, okay, so am I, whatever. And then the next day I was like, yep, something's up. And I drove to his house and that's when I saw the girl's car and he wasn't supposed to be home yet. And so my interpretation of it was, you you lied to me, you did, and I didn't even give him a chance. So I just went, I can't keep doing this because I sensed that something was, something's incongruent, but you don't have the balls to just say, well, by the way, I'm, I'm home now. I'm actually, he said he's at some so-and-so's house. And I'm thinking, I don't know who these people are. I don't, he could have been anywhere, I guess, but I made an interpretation. And then when I said the next day, where are you? He says, oh, sorry, I came home early. I, I, I really pressed through to get home. And I'm like, Press through. You were in fucking Saskatchewan. How do you press through? And then I was at his house by 10 o'clock. Like, what's your fucking press through for? So I, I made an I made an assumptions about. But the truth is, is that he there was something incongruent and he just could never tell me. And that's what bothered me. I wanted to be like, Lisa, I needed to have a meeting, blah, 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 blah. But he didn't. And, and she was there for four hours because I went back at two o'clock and she was still there. So you think they were fooling around kind of thing? Well, I just know Darren. He's really is a sex addict. And like, what? And why was she there at 10 in the morning? And he drove home to have this meeting with somebody. And, and why was she there for 
four hours. She could have been there at eight for all I know. So it didn't make sense to me. And, and, and then when he said, Lisa, it's not what you think. She's just a friend of, friend of mine like you, like Joe is to you. And I thought, and then that was it. And then I just cut it off because I just, in my mind, I just, I can't handle that. The incongruency of there's some, I know there's something wrong, but nobody's ever going to fucking tell me the truth. They're never going to be bold enough to tell me the truth. They're never going to have the, they're never going to have the courage to say, Hey, Lisa, this is what happened. And then that's where I fall down is instead of just saying, Hey, they're allowed to be scared or make mistakes or, or need to come home for a meeting or like somebody because they were going to give them money for a business. Or, like, how do I know? I don't know the real story, but, but that he didn't fight for me really hurt me too. I didn't say anything after that. I just, I just checked out. How long ago was that? It's like a couple of Thursdays ago, like three, three Thursdays ago. So it's still pretty raw. Yeah. So could have I said, yeah, yeah, what happened? Okay, blah, blah, blah. but I didn't. I just went like I'm. T I just don't want to be hoodwinked. I don't want there to be a. Oh, I. Oh, I am. I'm actually. Oh, sorry. I am because he said he was going to be back in Calgary Saturday or Sunday, and we get together Sunday. And I'm thinking, if you're back Friday, but you, he already knows his plans. Like he's so, he's a planner. He's not a, oh, well, this doesn't work. So in my mind, I have a hard time with something's incongruent. You're not telling the truth. It doesn't matter if you're innocent or not. I, I, I don't know what to do about that. And then I check out. Hmm. I mean, I don't know any girl that needs to be at anybody's house on Saturday from 10 until 2. I, I just don't. I don't care if they're friends or not. It's a long time to hang out. <laughs> but at the same time, I didn't stick around and ask. I just, I guess I, I sort of wanted him in my wrongness, even if it was wrong, Elijah. I want a man to say, Lisa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I know what it looks like. I'm sure you're probably putting things together. Can, let's just talk. Let me take you for dinner on Saturday. Let's just whoa just i'm good like phone me just phone me and say i know it looks a certain way just baby just just hold on like it's it's not what you think let's i'm going to take you for dinner i'll pick you up on saturday but i don't have a guy like that that's doing that to help me work through my own stuff yeah. don't have anybody that's going to hold space for me and allow me to be crazy and ridiculous i just have to be hurt because i just know something's not right and I just want Amanda to show up and just say, hey, okay, I get you're mad. I get it. I Okay, like, I'm going to tell you all about it. I'm picking up on Saturday, okay? So, picking up on Saturday, whatever. But it never ha it doesn't happen. Because they get scared, too. they just like, ah, fuck. Like, I don't want to deal with it. Or she's shutting down. Or she's, uh, I'm, I'm done. It just makes me feel like I'm not worth it to work through anything. And I need somebody to help me work through my stuff. Because I've been hurt a lot. I can just I need somebody. I just, I just need you to hold space for me so that I can be, be my goofy, crazy self. And then I know that you love me. And I know that I love you. Then it's going to be okay. Because nobody's kicking me out. Nobody's telling me to leave. Nobody's not saying anything. Nobody's being quiet or not telling me the truth. You know, I need, I need a hug too. You know, I need a, somebody to hug me too saying, please, you're being really silly. And you know how much I love you? I would have all, I would have just, just, it would, everything would have disappeared if he would have done that. He would just come over and gave me a hug and saying, I love you, Lisa. I, I love being with you. I love everything about you. It's all good. I just didn't communicate with you. Are you good? I would have just dissolved. No problem. No communication is hard for me. He returned my dress yesterday because um, I, I had two dresses. He says, no, no, it's not here. I said, sure, it, my, no, my dress is over there, Darren. He says, no, nope, it's not over here. So fi he finally found it. But all he said was, hey, you were right. I found your dress. I'm going to drop it off at your house. Like, 
even that hurts. It's not like, hey, Lisa, I found your dress. It was a great night that we had. I remember, blah, blah, blah. I really miss you. I hope you're doing well. And, uh, but, but he doesn't. It's just always, hey, I found your dress. I'm going to drop it off. Like it's no big deal. Like he's not feeling anything. It's no big deal. Well, I did the same thing too, didn't I? Yeah, yeah, because I shared my truth and I got kicked in the head for it. Well, do you know, I'll tell you what happened on my end. <laughs> um, I think a few times we've had our sort of big core wounds hitting each other at the exact same time. Yeah, yeah. And so I think at that point, I think it was just it was just when you wrote the sentence i have no interest in your work <laughs> yeah it yeah. was just like that is the core of my greatest wounding with everyone that i love yeah and the reason why i pushed everyone away and the reason why probably you know I, i'm not i don't have a rich life with my i've got a lot of people i love that i'm not in rapport with and i've broken off with and i've i've I've, I've shut the door on so many people so many times. I got rid of thousands of people twice from my Facebook. Just, I had this thing in mind and all of a sudden I'm like, you know what? This isn't working out. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, I've completely sabotaged my network completely just because of my, I think it's, you know, I'm the youngest, you're not listening to me, you're not interested, I'm bringing forth whatever it is. And all I want you to do is go, hey, what is it? Or what are you working on? I remember this one time, my sister's place, and I'd worked all day on this map, and it was the beginning of the inflow matrix. It was like the first time I drew the four levels out, and the first time, and it was, it, it was like, I was, I was proud. Like it's not often, like so often in school, right? I never tried hard. I've never tried hard for anything in school. You learn to try the minimum to get a, to do what you have to, and then fuck it. And so I remember being in this enrichment program and all these people were putting these presentations and I had, I had spent like five minutes <laughs> on mine. And these are like brilliant kids, right? And they're showing shit that's just, freaking brilliant and my one of my best friends ian bernie had, had got these drawings and he freaking he drew this like he just did this massive amount of work in a short amount of time and it blew me away with the work he did and you know what i did my my project was how to stop shade in buildings downtown by creating sky, skyscrapers that were <laughs> pointy <laughs> well why not why not? <laughs> so like, and I, I spent no time and I, I humiliated when I, I went up and I did my smart ass joking thing around it and humiliated myself. And there was someone from outside the school class. It was grade five. I remember. And it was a big thing. It was like the project of the year for the enrichment program kind of thing. Right. And I, I was always in the back told to shut up and all my friends were around the sides. Like this teacher hated me. <laughs> <laughs> and there was like a war between me and him the entire year <laughs> and there was like the 20 kids in the middle he liked and then the 10 kids on the end and they were all my friends and we weren't allowed to talk so we were just on the outside don't talk sit there and listen to this motherfucker who i hated because he was such a arrogant son of a bitch <laughs> but you know, the, the, you know, whatever it is in terms of, of creating something you care about and then putting, so, the more effort you put in, the more you're kind of going, well, no, now it's really significant. No, I'm putting more. Now I put 30 years in. Now you really better look at this and what, you're still ignoring me. And so for me, when that happened, it was like, and again, this is linked to your gift is, you, is you're, you're just unconsciously pointing to, here it is, pal. You want to taste it here? Here, you want to, you want to, you, you want to know what your thing is? And the per, and like, because no, you- that wasn't it, Elijah. I just didn't- No, I'm not saying you're, I'm not saying you're doing that. Just, just oh, let me finish. Okay. I, I'm not saying you're doing that. Okay. But it's kind of like, I'm just saying it's, it's, 
And then what happened for me is, you know, I just, I went into this, I go, my pattern is I'm going to show you, but you're out. <laughs> yeah, we got that. And, and so, you know, in the kind of, you know, and in those moments, I guess, where I sort of disengage from someone now, like you, I know, okay, well, this, this is, if I'm disengaging this strongly, I'm, I'm very hurt or, you know, I got triggered big time here and I got to sit with it and think about it and sort of reflect. And, and I'm kind of like, it's, it's, it's in a, it's a bit of a haze for me to, to be honest about what happened in a sense. And just as you're speaking, I'm realizing, cause I, <laughs> I had another guy who has just said he wants to launch my work as a first move in a game of 144 moves to create a new 4D free space library online. And this is a sort of director out of Nantucket, I think. And we, for the last two, three months been really connecting strong on this. And then he was sending me all these emails and all, like he was downloading his work to me, just like I do to other people. Yeah. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I was just like, holy fuck, like this is I, like, you're, you're pounding me here. Like I've got my own shit and you're pounding me with a waterfall. Like would you fucking, st and basically just like you, like going, like just fucking stop. Like I've got my work. I love you, but stop your fucking maps, right? And that's linking into, you know, there's probably a thousand people that could tell me that. And again, my wound of feeling like rejection, right? No, I'm giving you my best rejection. And so this guy at the same time is, is to, and then all of a sudden I go like this, boom. And that's my, you know, when I disconnect, I can really disconnect. And it was just like, because I got overwhelmed and it was past my limit, I didn't communicate. But what I do is this, I'm maybe I'm just like you where I go, okay, I'm going to wait and see what you do. I'm stopping all communication. And now I'm going to watch your communication to me. And he, and he, he sent a few more pounds, but he could probably sense something. So he didn't kind of do a lot, but he didn't go. All I was waiting for was, how are you? Uh, I noticed you stopped communicating. That's it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting days, days, I'm waiting weeks. Now it's getting near a month. And this is like someone I'm in a major project with. Someone I'm, who's, who's looking at my videos and going, you got it, I love it, good. And that's all I'm waiting for. I just want someone to go, this is good enough. I fucking, you know, I'm, hundreds of videos, maps. Like, isn't this good enough? It's good enough, is it? Please. <laughs> and so I, he still hasn't communicated with me, but all this while I know it's not like I'm mad. It's not like you better send me the right info. I'm going, I'm curious. I'm going, how long, who's going to give in first and how long is it going to last? Like he's the same as me. I know he's in the thing. He's got his pattern of, of disconnect and we just disconnected. I, you know, he go, ah, he's a flake. He's not talking to him anymore. Ah, I'm not going to talk to him. Right. And so these two guys who had the strain, you know, just a huge bond immediately gone, not talking. And, and that to me is like the, 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 by our age, our ability to disconnect is so strong, so quick, so ruthless that, you know, you, you pull back <laughs> and you're pulling back here and he's just like, what the fuck happened? Because he knows you and then he's seeing you all, all over there and he's like, uh-oh, uh-oh. And so whatever, he's probably like in his pattern of okay leave mom alone she's mad well that and you know that's what marriage was to an angry wife criticizing him not allowing him to do what he wanted same thing with his father and his mother like and so he he just wants to do what he wants to do and he doesn't want to have to tell anybody any different or, or put up with it because it's just but when relationships aren't worth it they're just not worth it i think that's the truth like you're my you're and i relationships worth enough to me that to take a break and then you say hey you want to talk yeah okay yeah i'm going to talk with you but and with darren if he said lisa can we talk about things that'd be a, yeah we could talk about things but most people you just they just disappear it doesn't mean anything but they're just, i try to like john's work into just karma attracting karma for working out patterns you and i i think have a have enough love 
for e each other, Elijah, that you could say my wound is when you said that that hurt, which I could see that that hurt. And it's not, I like you for you, but I don't want to be like part of your working tribe. I just want to be with you for you. I'll listen and be a part of you exploring and that, but I don't want to be a part of the, the working world. It's like me being part of Darren's fucking furniture world. I hated it. He'd tell me all about his furniture world, his contract and who did what. And I'd be like, I don't care. I'm not interested in the furniture world. It's, it's how you make your money. I get it. I'm not interested. Well, and I guess, I guess sometimes, I mean, in my own mind, I have imagined, let's say you and me on stage. Yeah. I have, you know, heard sometimes from you ideas of working together. Yeah. So, and me, I mean, I'm seeing it, man. I need, I need hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, I'm fuck. I mean, I, I am at the core <laughs> of this yeah. huge, massive thing that's about to happen that's coming through me. And so I look to everyone that I know at some point and go, uh, I mean, if I could give you a job paying $100,000 a year tomorrow, yeah. you'd probably be talking, right? Like you probably go, well, uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. What are you doing? What are we doing? What's the plan? Yeah. What do I got to do? Oh, you mean just kind of hang out, talk on a stage and uh, okay, I'm in. I mean, I'm saying like when I offer what I'm going to offer to the people I know, yeah. and you're one of them, you're going to say yes. Everyone's going to say yes because it's so fucking good. Like, I mean, I've been saying that to you. I know people don't believe because my own, again, I'm, I'm like uh, the homeless guy walking down the street saying, I'm going to change the world's economic system and completely believing it. But actually, I've got proof that no one knows or sees because I actually was in the coffee shop for the last 25 years mapping the whole fucking thing out, right? But what they see is the homeless guy walking down the street, walking with my little, hey, man, you know, got my speaker, got my speaker, got some LSD, and I'm going to have some fun. <laughs> but this morning, you know, I'm talking with 14 of the most loving, beautiful, smart people I've I've met as a team who have been together for two years who have, you know, 12 teams of 12 teams that are about to change the world filled with people that want to change the world. Like you want to, I want to be around people who want to change the world. I don't want to be around fucking people who don't give a flying fuck about fucking everything except what they want, you know? So you're, to me, you're, you're just in the wrong place with the wrong people, you know, <laughs> That's you get to the right place, the right people, and you're you're gonna be like a fucking eagle soaring. You've been playing with the crows, and the eagles are going, uh, "Hello down there, uh, get you know." And it's gonna happen. Like now, I'm at the point of because I'm usually waiting for the self sabotage or the outside sabotage to come in and take this out. Right? Like I'm, I'm I've never got this far. Like this is. This is usually I'm taken out by now. And I was almost taken out because Nova went back to school. And so the, the only programmer I had oh. who's building this shit can't work anymore. So it's like, oh, fuck, I'm fucked again, right? Yeah. But this man, Mr. Sterling, get it done. He's going to school. He's in the LCL program. He's, he launched a game that I'm playing that is freaking phenomenal that he built by himself. And he just spent the last 12 hours making this chat room ready. You know, like for nothing, yeah. because we're working together on this project, because he's so inspired by it that he's saying, fuck it, man, I'm going to fucking build this shit. Right. That's who I want to be around. Fucking maniacs who who will work for nothing for days to do something because they want to. That's what I'm like. If I want to do something, I'll fucking do it. I'll build a prototype not paid because I can do that. That's the level of creativity I'm at. Sorry, getting less excited. That's good. No, it's awesome, man. Like, yeah. And again, it's kind of like you know, I'm, 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 I'm sort of going, oh fuck. Okay, wait a second here, because we had our time apart, and you were working, and we were spending, you know, week. I had that weekly connection with you, mm -hmm. and then see, and then you know, and I was always gauging your emotional level. I could see when you're up, see when you're down, see when you're in between, see when you got the thing, and going, okay, well, this is where. This is her groove. That's not her groove. And this is okay. So I'm gauging, seeing it. Then I can see in your eyes. It's like you can see in mine, you know, how much sadness is there and how much anger and how much. Uh, and, you know, you're almost like the first person who's, who's, who said to me, 
you know, I see your sadness. And it's just like once, you know, you're, you're filled with grief. You know, you just had the shittiest six months of your life and no one even notices. That's the worst part. No one even gives a flying fuck. You know, and, and meanwhile, I'm trying to help people and I'm, you know, I'm actually helping people or I'm actually going out of my way without being paid to assist these people that I know that don't really seem to, again, care or understand anything about my own emotional state. It's like, what the fuck am I doing? And it's like, I read these spiritual books and I'm going, okay, I'm trying to be spiritual. I want to be spiritual. I got to be like, I got to be like the dude. I got to be the man who does it. I got to be the man who fucking does it. I got to... Oh shit. You know, my whole fucking world is a chaotic mess. But along the way, no matter what chaos I'm in, I'm always working. I'm always getting progress. So whenever I come back to it, it's just like now I can look around and I can like uh, pull out the, the 3D time translator, you know, a little pro. <laughs> well, I love it. Go, you know, fuck, man, if I ever showed anybody what I really got, you know, give me, you know, 100 people in a presentation, give me two hours, give me all my tools, and let me just show you. Let me just show you what I've done. Because believe me, I show a little bit to people now, and they're like, huh? These four ladies in Yorkton, they're like, super psyched, because they're, you know, it takes a while to get it. Like Lori, I've been working with 10 years. She did a value system like 10 years ago, ran her whole company on one fucking map, no training. And she's like, she was in front of 300 people who are all like agents in some financial world. She went, here's my value system, right? Here's what I, I work by. Here's what I love. I, I, I'm not mocking her, you know, <laughs> my greatest respect for her. But I just mean <laughs> this one map, which we barely did anything with, had a huge impact on her. And I've seen this with people that, you know, you never know, right? Like all the, the stuff that you've done with people, you, no one is telling you, Lisa, you changed my life through that conversation. Lisa, you changed my life because you were pissed off at me and called me on my shit when no one called me on my shit. And I'll bet you there's like a hundred people that you call them on their shit. They've never told you, they never admit to anybody. But if you die tomorrow, they'd be at your funeral going, Lisa told me the honest thing when no one else did, because most people will not expose their frailties and weaknesses to the world and admit what you have done for them. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, I think that's that's the the part of the wound is is dead. If I love myself, then the other stuff won't really matter as much. I'll just be like, go, I love myself. I love myself, I deserve more respect or congruency, but it won't hurt like it hurts. It'll just be like, ah, that hurts. And I, I deserve more respect or more contact or whatever. I think that's what it'll, it'll feel like instead of being wounded like it was, I'm the little, hurt, little girl. It'll just be like, ah, oh, yeah, that hurts. I really liked him. But I deserve more. I, I really like myself. What would it be like to have that? Actually, like I really, I really like myself. <laughs> Is there anything that I could say that could assist your emotional state? Because I would, I would, I would like you to regain your happiness and your inner joy. What can I say? What can I do? Is there anything I can do? I can make you promo video. If all the things that I could do. Yeah. Is there anything I could do for you that would assist you to get you where you want to go? I, you don't even know, you've known me for long enough, Elijah, that I, you could tell me who I am. And I mean that from a, like a, a core, like a, knowing somebody's core, or knowing, knowing my, and I don't, I won't mean like, oh, you're this or that, just like, because sometimes we just forget who, who we are right because we don't see ourselves we just people just look at us and they say oh it's like if i if i was you i'd use your height as your strength because there's nothing like physical presence you were given a body by god to be a physical presence to stand up and say your truth because it has more impact than a small little john joe pesci saying this stuff like it's just that's just one that's just a gift that i see 
So if you're gonna, for me, if you're gonna dress up in garb and stuff, people are gonna, ooh, who's that guy, man? He's that's scary. He's already tall. That's scary. But when I've seen you on talk shows, when you're just you, I'm so proud of you. Like, and I don't mean proud. I hate that word proud. Actually, I just, I, I, I just, there's some, there's some grace about you as a man, and as a man with wisdom that when you talk to everybody, and you say your truth, and you're just you. I, I fall in love with you all over again. Like it's just you. And it's so powerful because it's from your heart. It's authentic. There's nothing going on. It's just you. And I think there's nothing more powerful than a man that can stand in his own whatever. Just, and because you're so tall, it, it adds. It's like an advantage. It's such an advantage. <laughs> and now that you're older, you know, you have your wisdom and your repertoire. You I like it. You sit there and like you get your who I am. Like it's awesome. Okay, I know what I'm going to do. Um, okay. After we're finished here, okay. I'm going to do a video testimonial for you oh. to advocate for your, you know, tell people what I think about you and why I think you should be used and how you should be used. <laughs> okay, that's good. I'll put it maybe on my LinkedIn profile on my tell as well. And here's a testimonial because those things, people actually read those or watch those. Yeah, or like even send it through your whole network. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set, I'm gonna set you up. I made you a video before that I thought was the key video, but mm -hmm. uh, this time I'll make you another video that is going to be the key video. This is this. This, this video is going to make you a quarter million dollars in the next year. <laughs> if it does, I'll share half more than I ever made. Nope. I mean, gifts are fine. I, I know you're generous and I don't, that's, that's uh, relevant to me. Um, and what your address? So I want to send you a card. I love writing cards every once in a while. And so I, I need your, to type your address for me. And you're saying I'd, I like that because I like writing cards. Okay. I think. Okay. Okay. Well, I can see you're feeling a little bit better. Yeah, a little bit better. I'm just tired. Like it's just been it, it, emotionally, it's been draining the last two weeks. So I'm getting there. Like I have moments where I'm like doing shit and doing great. But I, I have one more call about a shred grant for. Um, doing cool stuff in the world. And I don't know much about it, but if they get you a grant, they just take a percentage of it. It's called a shred. I don't know if you ever heard of it. Okay. Um, I go pick up my daughter and all is well. Okay. Cause I, I'm seeing a sort of a new type of like, to me again, like it's teamwork and it's like, it's, it's like the team needs to support the members of the team. And everyone needs to help everyone get their basic dollar per hour first, get that out of the way. And then once that's out of the way, then you can work on larger projects where you're getting percentages of products and you're getting your revenue streams through larger, you know, percentages, so to speak. But I think in the beginning, right, you got to start out for dollar per hour, help them get their dollar per hour coaching or facilitating what, what they're doing and then go to the bigger things. And so again, like, I feel like this, creative stream of like energy is just like like well, I, I get closer every time you you I chat or life goes on or there's hiccups is that i realize that i i am good at space and i'm good at helping people recreate their space because i just it comes naturally to me i don't have to think anything about it and it gets me excited and I have lots of ideas so i know that i'm it's if we keep pushing in that direction, but maybe it's not a feng shui title. Maybe it's like a space alignment state. There's different something about the resonance of the, the language. Mm. It's feng shui, but I don't tell people that. Because it's just common sense. You know, opening is small, then she can't get through, but I'm not going to say it that way. because Some people don't want to hear it like that. Right. Like I could help huge developments, but again, you, you, the hard thing too, Elijah, is you can't really, I can't, it's hard for me to prove it. So I did my own feng shui at the Irvine when I was there selling 
And I, I did amazing. I sold all 17 homes they asked me to rent out. I did this. And I consider part of it was because of the feng shui, because I changed the feng shui and I cleaned up the outside. Like I just did what I needed to do for the building. But how do I prove that? Well, you prove it. You did it. I did it. But was it the feng shui or was it me or was it the market? You know, well, were... no, I mean, you're, you're talking like a muggle. I mean, you got to know your magic and you got to understand that, you know, to me, you were given an impossible task. And that along the way you were saying the the moves you were making and in my mind went she's right she's good she's that da 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 and so it's again you you're 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 getting your feedback for relevance again from people that have no ability to even understand what you're talking about and so you know it's again like uh, millionaires don't use astrologers billionaires use astrologers and it's just like the billionaire has the acumen to choose the right person mm -hmm. So they get the right timing. So when they do something, it's massive rather than okay, because they're listening to the expertise and you are one of those expertises that the real rich people, if they listen to you, because they don't get access to people like you, right? They don't get access to that type of honesty about themselves, how they're fucking up. You know, most people are fucking up because they're fucking up, right? And if they're in a position of power, they get away with it because they're the boss. But doesn't mean that they don't fuck up, doesn't mean they don't feel bad, doesn't mean they don't have that core wound like you have it. So, I mean, to me, you're like a top level muse, like high end that is like zippity zap. When you're honored, that's when your true magic comes out. I mean, this is what you're doing with just little bits and pieces. But I mean, when you're honored, ay, ay, ay. Anyway, I'm going to make you a video. Thanks. You can uh, see what that is. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad we're back to our weekly chats. I, I have missed you dearly and realized that uh, it's, it's a, I need uh, our chats in a weekly basis to give me relevance and meaning too. So uh, I didn't do that well without you. That's for sure. I know it was long, wasn't it? It was like four months, three and a half months of four months of. Like, and, you, you know, to me, I just want to say something in turn, like, just like, like me, I want people to look at me and go, you know, fuck man, Elijah, he's worth it. Or his time is, is worthy. And so to me, I want to go, like you get a job, nothing is as important as our chat. Yeah. Nothing, you know, it can, other things can revolve around, but if, if I'm lowered because of that, nah, I'm top of the line. I, I'm highest value. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Feeding my family is top of the line, unfortunately, but I, I dearly love you. But that doesn't mean that we can't make provisions for other times, right? Like you just make another time that works, right? Yeah. And you stick to it. There's no excuses. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, no matter, I'm, I'm still in the habit of always testing. I'm always everybody, everybody all the time. Um, <laughs> Well, we're, we're good. We're good together. Like peas and carrots. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to get on my next call. So I love well, you dearly. Like I know it's so nice seeing you. And thanks for holding space for me, that masculine container so that I could just cry and do what I need to do to let out my, my rawness, raw emotion. So thank you uh, deeply for that. Most welcome. Aho. Oh, oh. <laughs>